And so the second question I have is if you are in a relationship and one day one of you guys gets the job opportunity of a lifetime, are you willing to give up your career and give up everything and be like, you know what? You're making what I make. And now we, we just need to move. And when you have the you have the opportunity for your others, your significant other to grow, which is his goal. His goal is never to work the same job forever. He wants to be like, hey, what can I do next? And what can I what can I learn next? Right. Otherwise, what are we really working for? Right. And so, you know, Micah, we sent him off on that Sunday. Your Sunday. flight was Sunday. And mind you, this is like a 13 hour flight. So and he has to he has to sleep on this flight because he got a report to work the Monday morning. So, you know, Micah was gone. And it was up to me and Eva to get the rest done by that Tuesday. And so we ramped it up even more between Monday, Sunday, and Tuesday. And so between Sunday to Tuesday, I had to call in an additional set of people to help me completely clean out the house, except for one room. We left the workout room filled with all the items that we wanted to keep. Like, you know, we kept the bed the nightstands and a dresser and the living room couch that we had invested in. It was a really quality couch. Nice couch. Um, and yeah, our friends and family, they cried and they, and I was like, bye y'all. You going to Hawaii, haven't you heard? But no, I do miss my friends and family. So you get three months. <laughs> I didn't say that. They were saying that. I remember I, I, I said it because I didn't think it was going to be longer than three months. But we knew no matter what, we weren't coming back to that house in Baltimore. Yeah. Yeah. And that was meant that was the mental piece. Like we were okay with a new fresh start somewhere else. Not to say something bad happened to us or we had a bad stint with some people and all this other we were just ready for change. We were yeah. literally thirty five years old and we like we did everything you could do in Baltimore, Maryland. Let's try something new. It it really wasn't that deep. So don't let don't overcomplicate moving and the thing that my grandmother told me is that I'll never forget now that she's passed it really means so much more she said you can always come back mm -hmm. and she was a traveler and she didn't start traveling until she was in her 60s and I remember one day she was like I'm going to Russia and I was like really? <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, that's, a, that's a place to start <laughs> and she had the time of her life and made friends that still to this day would call and check on her up until she passed so it's never too late to try the travel job transfer game. And it's really a life hack because they're paying you to travel. So come on. Why not? Hey. Do it. Yeah. So anyway, he accepted a position. So he went from making $50,000 a year, which is about $2,000 every two weeks net pay. For the people in my comments who are always like, is that gross or net? That was net actual take-home pay to being basically an electrical engineer overnight. Um, making anywhere between seventy-five to one hundred thousand dollars a year. Understand his pay changed a lot, and that's simply because he was taking on different roles, doing what needed to be done, filling holes, filling, staffing <laughs> things, and you know, being a solution to this company. And so I can't say you give you an exact number, but what that meant is he basically brought home twenty-nine hundred dollars every two weeks the day he he moved to Hawaii, um, and so. You're basically saying a, seeing a $900 increase in pay. And in addition, okay, so we talked about the pay. That was beautiful and all. $900 extra per month per pay, which is $1,800 extra per month. Think about what that will free you up to. That instantly meant that he could make what I made. I was bringing home about $1,200 every two weeks as a nurse manager. I had just quit my job right before the trip to Mexico because I was so burnt out and I just was over it. And I had switched to a new nursing position where I brought home, getting to it, $1,600 a month. And so that what's funny is I would get a gas mileage reimbursement, which was about $200 a month. Mm -hmm. So what did that equal? $1,800. I did the math. Isn't that crazy? I looked at my old pay stubs and my old gas reimbursement. I would bring home about $1,800 a month. And so the second question I have is if you are in a relationship and one day one of you guys gets the job opportunity of a lifetime, are you willing to give up your career and give up everything and be like, you know what? You're making what I make. And now we, we just need to move. And when you have the 
you have the opportunity for your others, your significant other to grow, which is his goal. His goal is never to work the same job forever. He wants to be like, hey, what can I do next? What can I, what can I learn next? Right. Otherwise, what are we really working for? Right. I remember the first company I worked with, or did was was it? Yeah, it was the first company I worked with. Well, my, the president of the company, the owner of the company, actually the owner of the company, he's like, "What did you learn at work today?" And that was like every time I saw him, that was his running question: "What did you learn at work today?" And he was like, "If you're not learning something at work, uh, you don't need to be here." You know, he was like, "Make sure you learn something every day at work." I actually wanted to sit down with him one day and like interview him, and you know. I, I think that's a good thing. If you know somebody who's successful, interview them yeah. and uh, get some success tips. But that, that was one thing. Um, so you should always be learning something new every day at work. Uh, that's one thing I took from him. And another thing, I can't remember who said this to me, but like you said, uh, I was talking about how many years I worked at the job. And I was like, at this point, probably it was like 10 years. He was like, now, do you have 10 years experience or do you have 10 years with one day experience doing the same thing over and over again. Ooh. So. Wait, say that one more time. <laughs> do you have 10 years of work experience? Or do you have one day of work experience doing the same thing for 10 years in a row? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so make sure you keep growing. Never stop growing. And right. make sure these companies know your worth. Make sure you know your worth, even if the company doesn't. Yeah. yeah. And if you know your worth and your company doesn't, it's time to move on. Boom. Okay. So we, we went with the job transfer. We accepted three months and not knowing what the future would hold after the three months. It was just like, hey, we'll talk again in three months and let you know what happens and where we, because they didn't really know. You know, if the if how long they would be the contract would be in Hawaii, they were there were still a lot of things up in the air. But what Micah got to what Micah knew for sure were these things. These are the stats you probably been waiting on. He would be working night shift, twelve hour shifts or ten hour shifts. Twelve hour shifts. Twelve hour shifts. Seven days on, seven days off. That's right. He got to move to Hawaii and work seven days in a row. And be off seven days in a row. Now, a lot of times what that meant is because they were short staffed, it meant that he had to pick up some extra shifts. So it ended up being nine days on and was that five days off? Right. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah. So, but still imagine having five days off to spend with your family and be in Hawaii and do what you want to do and sleep in. And so Micah and I never subscribe to the work Monday through Friday and be off on weekends idea. There's plenty of data out there and articles out there that support that that is not healthy for the <laughs> long run. And Micah and I can, have always said this, even before the, the experts were saying it. I always felt like Saturday and Sunday go by way too fast. It's so disrespectful. Monday, you're just pissed off and you can't even think straight. Don't don't have had a good time over the weekend and be over 30 because you're still recovering from that good time. So if at all possible, may include your work schedule in your arrangements when you're bartering with your uh, employer and you're accepting your job offer. Your time off is also just as important as your time in. Right. Because who said you got to work five days a week and only have two? Who hours? did that? Who made up that rule? I'm going to Google it. Who made that rule? Right. That's something that employers made. But as employees, we have to remember this is a contract and negotiation between both of you. So you have power in your in your negotiation. You don't have to agree to a job that you don't want to. Yeah. Now sometimes times are hard, you gotta do what you gotta do. But don't let that be your forever. Don't let that be your forever. We worked very hard. My, and with the thing we have really been given the two companies that we started with, Grace, but really we worked like actual slaves for these two companies. My husband worked there for how many years? 15. And 15 I worked, years a slave. Micah used to say 15 years a slave, and I worked for mine 12 years. 12 years a slave. And we hated going to work every day, but we knew that would not be our forever story. So when I see, so when, you, when people are coming at me now, like, of course you guys are doing good. You make so much money. Girl, by you all know how we used to struggle, and I used we used to I used to bring home food from work because we would work like dogs and be too tired to cook and too broke to order out, and so we would have to eat whatever Mike in the kitchen made. Shout out to you, Mike. You did what you could. You always provided for us at least three days a week. <laughs> this is that realness, okay? Yeah. Okay, so back to the perks. Seven days on, seven days off. He also received a stipend, which meant that every two weeks on payday, he would receive $2,000 to assist with any 
expenses that had to come our way from moving and living somewhere else. Well, since um, I was... Uh, temporary. Temporary. Not even temporary. But well, I forget what it's called when you're working away from home. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but you get a, a daily per diem to cover your meal costs. Yeah. So, so that $2,000 was literally for us to eat. Yeah. For you to eat. For, for me to eat. Yeah. That's the other life hack. M- uh, Michael signed up for this thing and he was supposed to come alone. But because Eva and I were freed up enough, we were able to join him in Hawaii. Understand there's people who work here, well work in Hawaii, we're not in Hawaii right now, and they have been alone. They have taken on this job because of the good money and good pay and good benefits, but their families are still back home in Maryland working their jobs and sending their children to private schools and all this other thing, and they're too hemmed up to enjoy even public school. Oh yeah, even public school. But they can't just up and leave because their child is in school. And so uh, we started homeschooling our daughter from a young age because we knew that we were going to move one day and we didn't want that to be our hem up. So that's what I'm saying. Start making small decisions as you go. There's different ways to homeschool now. You can even pay other people to homeschool your children now. They got all this crazy buck wild stuff. Or you can pick up and put your child in public school somewhere else, right. which is what Eva we were going to do. Um, but then COVID, which is funny. But right. anyway, continue. Sorry, I probably threw you off. Um... Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But, yeah. but per diem was for him. Oh, right, right, for, for to cover my meals, which was a decent amount every day, so it was enough to feed my family. So, also, what they gave him was paid housing, and what that meant was a one bedroom hotel room basically as a long term stay. But the hotel room came with a full mini kitchen, mm-hmm. washer dryer, Wi Fi, cable, electric, all utilities included and paid for. Yeah. Which was more so Micah and I, you know, went from living in a 1,200, 1,000 square foot townhome, however big our townhome was, to sharing a one bedroom, 700 square foot hotel room with our daughter. We sacrificed and made it happen because Eva and I were never at home. I mean, Micah was always gone at work and we were at the beach, hello, or wherever else fun, you know, we were in Hawaii. Right. So we were all about experiences. Service. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. So it was like I didn't have time. When, you know, people would tell me, "Oh, you're not giving your daughter her own bedroom and bathroom. How dare you? You know, limit your child. She needs her space. She needs her privacy to thrive. You know what she needed? Some outdoors. Eva does so much better behaviorally, mentally. Her clarity is much better because she gets to enjoy the sun. And that's something that we didn't have in Be More because it rained all the time, or it would be extremely warm, you know, where you couldn't even be out in the sun and enjoy it. And thinking big picture, worldwide, a lot of kids don't have their own room, you know. It's a USA thing. Yeah, yeah, and even in Hawaii, um, exactly. the, the, the cost of housing, kids ain't getting their own room. That's 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 a, a luxury. That's a luxury. And none of the kids come out any different. Let me tell you, if they come out even better, all the kids are happy. They're thriving. They're outside living their best life. They all can swim, Mm -hmm. which I feel like is just an... Anyway. I've been in so many houses in in Hawaii. Bunk beds are in the living room. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody's complaining. And nobody's lacking. Everybody's happy and living together as a family. Family. Because we got to bring that family unit. We need to be closer together as families. Yeah. Yeah. So So. just getting to it. Different is okay sometimes. I'm not saying it's always right, but different is okay. Because that perspective that we are gaining by living somewhere else and being different. Yeah. Anyway, paid. It's a whole world out there. It's a whole world out there. (laughs) Paid housing, uh, per diem, paid, you know, paid out. Mm. Car rental. They gave him a car to drive to work, to and from work, and to make market, whatever he needs to do. He, that car was given to him mm-hmm. for the last two and a half years. He had a car. We literally just turned in his work vehicle before we started traveling the other day. And it was just like, wow, we're really signing up for permanent life. Yeah. But imagine somebody paying your car note and your car insurance and your gas for two years. Imagine how much that would free you up. Another thing, he um, was able to carry over his PTO and sick time. I don't know. Were there any differences? Well, actually, since I'm I'm still based out of Maryland, I was still based out of Maryland, so I, it was still all my old stuff. You were able to carry it over, which was nice. You didn't lose it, is what I mean, by going to, doing a job transfer. Like moving permanently? or No, just temporary from Maryland no, to No, yeah, because I'm still a Maryland employee. Yeah. So he was able to keep, continue to grow whatever, you know, sick time he had and all of that. And um, 
that was it was a lot you know like how much how many how many weeks off a year three because i had my just had my five-year anniversary so i've got the three years a year, three, three weeks a three year. weeks a year whereas i work every other week anyway so i don't really even need, need to use my pto unless i'm taking off for a long time so he only does it when we go when we fly out right um which is something that a lot of people couldn't understand yeah because they were like well how do you take off work well i don't need to take off work i'm because back when i was in maryland i was off six days in a row yeah um, eight days on, six days off. Yeah, and they were like, "But that messes you up for your vacation. If you got to take off, you got to take off a whole eight days." When I was back then, or you got to take off a whole seven days, and people were like throw so throwing off. I'm like, I don't need to take off because I'm already off. I'm like, if I want to take a, a a ten day vacation, I only got to use four days because I'm already off six. Yeah. Or like, if I just want to go, most people's regular vacations are like five days. I just go on my days off, you know. So. And people would be so thrown off like that, they couldn't get it through their heads. So I'm like, my schedule's just that lit where I don't have to use my vacation unless I'm going off for a month. Yeah. Like, I'm, like we're going now 20 days and I only got to use like, um, a week's vacation. Yeah. Technically, I, I use two weeks just because, just to burn something up because I ain't got nothing else to do, but do you for, but. <laughs> yeah. Also, the employer match stayed the same. Um, he was able to work in a different state and continue to reap the benefits of employer match. That does change now that he's permanent, but again, we still appreciated that. Right. He was able to live in Hawaii and explore and then live his best life and have foot to sand every day he wanted um, and enjoy that with his newfound friends and family. And once again, our daughter was homeschooled, so her life was amazing. Is amazing. <laughs> Um, and just to talk briefly about the work environment, workload versus dealing with coworkers, um, and how that changed just by you changing jobs from your 15 year job to this job. I just noticed his, his mental was better. He still has to deal with some foolishness, but, mm -hmm. um, it's, by working night shift, it's just not, it's not as many people to create the foolishness. Right, right. <laughs> so he's been blessed in that regard. I noticed he comes home and he's not as, you know, pissed off about what John did and all that. And so I highly encourage you to be conscious of your work environment. And if at all possible, find you a work environment that you can thrive in. And you, I found like if you talk to most people who don't like their jobs and you say, well, what don't you like? It's never... Most of the time, it's not the job that they don't like. It's the people that they work with a lot of the times. I was like, so why, you know, first off, why are you still hanging around? I mean, you got to work together to a certain extent. But, like, when I was in my first company, I used to come in at the last second. So I didn't have to hang around. These guys used to come in a half hour early. And <laughs> I'm like, that's, that's your personal time. They used to be mad at me. Why aren't you, if you're not here 15 minutes early, you're, you're late. late. I'm like, well, my pay starts here, so I'm going to be here, here, you know? Because I'm like, I don't want to sit around with guys that I don't like, you know, and that, that don't like me. So, I don't know. It's, it's Most of the time, it's not the job that you hate. It's the people you work with. And so, I, I'm, I'm working at Night Shift. Uh, even though this new company, most of the guys are mad cool. I had no, no nothing bad to say about any of those guys. I mean, even if I do, I wouldn't say it. But... <laughs> But, um, uh, it's the people that you work with. So at night, it's only like a couple of guys on hand and we're spread out. I can do, you know, I can keep my space and keep their space in peace. In this peace. Peace of mind. Baby. Peace. Yeah. I'm an introvert anyway, so I, I, I can sit in silence and be happy. Also, we, uh, had dedicated Thai massages every two weeks when he was off, which also assisted in that process. Yeah. We also were able to pick up and go because we had a very cheap mortgage that we could pay and not feel even if we were unable to acquire a tenant. And if I'm being honest, I was shocked that people wanted to move in our home because, you know, I was like thinking too small, like, oh, our home is so old and nobody's going to want to stay there. and It's in a not so safe area. We have people who still ask to this day, hey, did your tenant move out? Do you need somebody? Because I'm, I'm willing to pay extra. And I, so so don't limit your own thinking and your own life. You might be getting in the way of your own success. That was the case for me because there's not a month that has went by that we have not collected rent. We've been so fortunate. Even through this whole pandemic, we, we receive our rent early every month. 
every month. Shout out to my tenants. Um, also, we sold our cars. We were able to, we, we, as much as we love nice things, the nice things that we do acquire, they are just that things. So be careful with what you buy and try to live as minimally as possible. We like nice premium things. So we had a very expensive Volkswagen, but when it was time to sell it, there were no hard feelings because right. we had driven it and done all the things we ever wanted to do. We went on road trips galore. We decked it out. We had fun. We can say we did it. Yeah. We have no regrets. That's one thing Micah and I strive to do is never to have regrets. Um, and so we were able to find a buyer. Actually, the dealer bought our car back from us because yes. they had people who were asking for the car and they no longer made the car. And so we got top dollar. Shout out to my dad for detailing it and turning it into them. It, they said it looked showroom ready. So they gave us more than what we asked and we gave my dad the difference. I think my dad got the change, which was like 900 something dollars. He made out, but he deserved it because he went in, did all the paperwork, all the running around, and we sold our car through a notary while we were here. Yeah. So, again, don't listen to what people might tell you. They might tell you it's not possible. You got to sell your car in person. You can. Turns out you can. Right. And let me tell you, the dealer, they had their ways because they wanted that car. Right. So, I say all that to say, make a list of job goals and requirements that you have for your employer. Don't let them sell you short. Just because you receive a typed offer letter doesn't mean they can't retype it. Mm -hmm. That is for you to go home, tell them to give you 24 to 48 hours to do your own research and to come back and renegotiate your terms if you are not happy because you are in this job for the long haul until you can find a, a better one. Um, and so don't sell yourself short. Um, we didn't know how this would go. We just tried it. We were like, we know we wanted something different. It could have been horrible in Hawaii. And if right. I'm being honest, Everybody has their in their head this notion of what they think Hawaii looks like and what Hawaii is. And when I tell you, it's a floating Baltimore, Maryland. <laughs> Minus the crabs. Minus the crabs and the, and the amazing food. The blue crabs, Maryland blue crabs. Hawaii is a beautiful place if you know where to go. Just like anywhere else in the world. It is still a U.S. state island whatever it has all the same issues as crime as everywhere else it's just not as bad so instead of gunshot victims you don't hear about gunshot you know killings a lot on the news but you will hear about petty theft and people who you know got stabbed there's there's always going to be something you know so it's like and it almost feels so familiar to us where it's like we're okay with it it right. feels better it's easier for us to transition because it feels normal still and uh, we did move to the city when we first got here. Yeah. Um, got there. The city of Honolulu. Oh, oh yeah, we're not in Hawaii right now. Uh, we, uh, Which also, yeah. It helped us It helped us transition. Um, right now, we moved out, I guess, outskirts. Country, outskirts. County. We county. call it, we call county. it Honolulu county. county on the map. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. it's actually in, in a new up-and-coming city, I guess. Mm -hmm. but It's going to be the next hotness. Yeah, the next hotness. But... You know, it is what it is. It's, it's just like anywhere else in the world. It's good neighborhoods, bad neighborhoods. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot prettier in most places, you know. But. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is pretty. Yeah. Weather, beautiful. The weather, that's the thing that is not talked about enough. The weather is amazing every single day, even if it's raining. Every, every day. We flew into Texas the other day, and the amount of sweat that my skin <laughs> had... We I was had disgusted. to deal with humidity. Oh. So as soon as we got out, we were just pouring sweat. If you want to know more about Hawaii and you're thinking about booking a trip to Hawaii, hit me up actuallytravels.com or my IG actually travels. Let's talk. I want you to have a successful Hawaii experience. Okay. But back to work. Uh, any other questions about work? No, I'm ending with my pointers. So make a list of goals. Okay. And I'm also answering questions in the comments that I've had. Another question is, do you miss home? Yes. I miss home in the sense that I miss the food. I miss my friends and family. But the ones who really care about me have gone through the expense of coming out to see us and visit us. So that has helped. We have had a really good transition. I mean, hello. You got friends who live in Hawaii. It's like, oh, I go, I'm going to Hawaii. Um, so I had people who paid their own way and came out to visit us and stay with us. So that was amazing yeah. but do you miss home i miss home i miss my old car that don't mean i'm gonna buy it again 
I miss all kinds of stuff. I miss home. I, I miss I miss my peeps, my family, my well not well my family. You miss and, your family, and your family is where? <laughs> and, uh, my parents are in Mexico, but my parents, my sisters. Oh yeah, you said and my nieces sisters. and nephews. My friends. Um, my friends. I miss my friends. We had some epic game nights all the time. I yeah. miss having that. We can have game nights on Zoom now. Not the same. Not the same. Not the Not same. same. But uh, you know, it's a certain thing. I miss the food. I miss the food. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Everybody's like, you're going to miss us. You're going to be really like, and I, and that was another thing I had to get past. Cause I was like feeling guilty that I didn't miss people enough. Right. But I think it's because we're in this age where we just FaceTime each other every five seconds. We zoom in, we text in, right. we duo and we on IG like, and it's just like, I don't even, I don't have a chance to miss you because we're always talking. Right. So just do what makes sense for you. And if you're still thinking like, oh, I'm too far to be from home. Consider short stints. Like, remember, we signed up for three months. After three months, we could have cut it all down and said, you know what? We out of here. And never forget the power of new experiences either. Thank uh, you. New experiences will make you forget old past things. So, Ooh, yeah. You're doing it today. I uh, am. Yeah, am, am I speaking powerful? Am I speaking word and truth? <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> but, but, yeah, new experiences. N never forget, you know. Um... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, uh, don't, don't get stale. Two two more things that, I, that people say. How do you afford to live in Hawaii? This is like the number one question. I think the answer is that we live lean and we live responsibly. I'll say the responsibly part and, I'll, and then I'll let Micah interject because he's going to love this part. Mm -hmm. um, the average rent in Hawaii is $3,000 a month. Honolulu, to be specific. Um... Don't let nobody tell you different. Whatever, if you hear about rent that is less than $3,000, understand that it's probably something wrong with the space, okay? Or, or it has no elevator, okay? It's, it's not going to have the things that you are accustomed to having. So for us, we had some minimum requirements. We wanted a pool. We need AC. AC is not an automatic in Hawaii. We also needed parking. Outside of, and what and the other thing we really hoped we could get was one and a half bathrooms. It didn't have to have a second bedroom. What we found out is that we just needed two bathrooms. Um, that just helps for our getting ready and getting out the door. Three thousand dollars is the bare minimum for that to happen. Um, actually, we came in a little under. We came in a little. We came in a lot under actually, but that was because we were willing to not live in the busy. In, in the, in the we city. were willing to drive a little bit. Yeah. But understand, I say all that to say when my husband's. Uh, housing was being paid for we were given $5,500 a month to spend on housing and so what we did was we went to the very top of the list and we said what can $5,500 get us and we found an over-the-top luxury building to move into which had everything we ever could have ever needed I will have a separate video sharing how that experience went now that we don't live there anymore because I don't want nobody tracking me okay but it had a movie theater. So guess who didn't have to pay for movie tickets anymore? And it came with popcorn and drinks. So guess who didn't have to pay for snacks anymore? Concession snacks. It came with um, a golf simulator room, a library, a pool, a hot tub, barbecue areas. It was so much. Electric bikes. Electric bikes. So I'm trying to tell you, pick wisely where you live and where you work. LA if we wanted it. You know, we didn't use it, but we had that option. It was across the street from Whole Foods. It was across the street from the beach. It was so much that that place gave us where we literally did not have to spend money to live. It was ridiculous. Like I, Three gyms. I had three fitness centers. I'm trying to tell you. There's places out there if you're willing to spend money. If you got money, this is this is this piece right here is for the people who got money. But maybe you don't know what your money can do. Check it out. Some things have happened. Some things have changed since the last time we bought a house. Okay? So the last thing I want to... Well, I, we live responsibly. And we, live, we lived, you know, within our means. But also, we lived lean in the sense that we only spent money on eating out and shopping, groceries. Paying for our housing, which was reimbursed. And traveling. We have very little other expenses. We Everything else comes from our personal money. So, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. But that is how we live and how we afford to live in Hawaii. It is very possible to live in Hawaii. If you're willing to give up some common conveniences and comforts of life. We have a friend who decided she wanted to live in Hawaii for the rest of the year. She just wanted to change. And the, 
her list of requirements was this long when she first moved and got on the island. When I tell you she was there two weeks and that list shortened to this or less, and she, because she was having so much fun, she was like, I'm willing to give up this. Turns out I don't need a car. Turns out I don't need a, uh, my own house. Turns out I can be somebody's roommate. Right. So now she's living in a room at somebody's house. And it's, it's working. And she's living her best life. And she's Yeah. Hey, girl. Hey. So, um, live, live lean. Pick your home wisely. Yeah. Um, One thing, I've always felt like I've never, ever, 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 which helped us do this. In the in the beginning, um, I never wanted to be house poor. Um, so like you know, our first house, I'm well, not it's not wasn't even our first house, but like after we moved it into a house, our mortgage payment was like five fifty, six hundred dollars. Yeah, you know, so we, we could we could spend it that and pay it. Um, even moving, we didn't have to worry about oh we got to sell our house and all this stress. We just kept it it's five six hundred bucks a month. Um, and we just charged somebody that same amount for rent. And they were like, yes, we'll stay in there for five, six hundred dollars a month because it was so affordable. And people are like, oh, you should be charging more. You should be charging more. And things have worked out where we don't have to worry about income. You know what they're doing for us? They're keeping our home safe. They're using it and they're paying all the utilities, which we would have had to pay had we not had acquired a tenant. And we had someone in the home that let the construction people in every day. So right. see, we had, we were thinking bigger, and now we're at the point where we're going to charge more rent. And guess what? We don't have to find a new tenant because our tenant is like, we're staying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so and you can't just look at the dollars all the time. That's why I have to share more content on my channel other than just budgeting. Budgeting is so much bigger than just budgeting dollars and, right. and change and cash envelopes. That's just one little piece of it. And it's why if you need help in, with that budgeting world, hit me up, RochelleAdamson.com, because we talk about the emotional, all of that. And if we had like a two thousand twenty five hundred dollar mortgage back in uh, Maryland, yeah, we could have had a nice house and been pitch posh, but we wouldn't have been able to travel. We wouldn't have been able to get up and leave and go to Hawaii or like at the drop of a hat. Yeah. Um, or that much house, that much money for a house. I've been working a lot more to try to pay for that house and try to have money for retirement. This, that, and the other. Pay for her nursing school when we were doing that. Yeah. It just. A cheaper house frees you up so much, and in the end, a house is for sleeping. It's for <laughs> doing your laundry. I'm gonna say adult things. Adult things, you know. What is a house really? It, what is a house really? Now I understand our house has to be a little nicer now here because Rochelle works from home and things like that. But, but we had to sac make sacrifices even to have that nice house. We have to drive a little further out of town. It's stuff that we gave up. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, don't be house poor. You know, there's the whole wide world out there. Even in our cities, there's stuff that we can be doing every day from day to day um, and getting out of the house. Yeah. Come home to sleep, recharge, and get back out there. Yeah. Yeah. And this concludes our segment on what we do for a living and why I quit my job as a nurse. And how we uprooted our family of three from Baltimore, Maryland to Oahu, Hawaii. This will be the video link that I send to every future commenter. Whoever posts on any of my other videos and says, well, how do you afford? And how do you... I understand if you have general questions and you right. mean it in a well-meaning way. That's different. I know Eva told me to wrap it up. That's weird. Um, how do you ask somebody that? <laughs> would never question anybody else but because it's so much money you got to understand ten thousand dollars a month bringing in mentally that's a lot of money and one person is bringing that in and then there's some months when you bring in twenty thousand thirty thousand it's like how the heck are you doing that ain't nobody asked Jeff Bezos like why why I gotta get all these questions I don't understand am I not supposed am I supposed to limit myself I don't get it I can uh, see where are you from you from Denver how do you afford to live in Denver <laughs> Everybody's got to afford to live somewhere. I'm, I don't get it. <laughs> you were saying wrap it up. We got places to be. We're going to go see your nephews. Yay! Yeah. Anyway. Does she look like she's lacking, y'all? I think she's okay. Let's check out the fit. Don't she I'm look like fine. a... Uh, I'm fine. I'm fine. between a leprechaun and Janet Jackson in the 80s with the buttons. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> That is how we do it. That is why we are able to live the life that we are living. And just remember, you can do this too. 
you just have to be willing to make some sacrifices and get a little bit uncomfortable and try new things. This is not the video telling you to quit your job and go move to Africa and live and all that. No, be strategic. I'm not telling you not to either. <laughs> We've been, we're 15 years, 20 years in on our work experience. So, you know, it took some time. This was not something that just happened overnight. If you were just finding my channel, you were just, you know, thinking this is new and this has been, been, nah, honey, check we're out. Old. We are old. We just look good. You know, we, <laughs> we are in our late 30s, okay? We are Healthy. Not, oh, thank you. Oh, okay, okay. All right. I can, yeah, I can agree. So, it just, it, you have to do what works for you. Life is life. Let it be a journey. Let it, sh let it do things for you that you never thought possible. Dreams do still come true. You have to just work, to put in the work to achieve them. That's it. That's all I got to That's say. That's it. That's it. Y'all gonna say it with me? Peace, Peace, love, love and budgets. Budget. Aloha. In travel. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <Just love. laughs> Might as well. Uh, what else? What else? Um, happiness. Happiness. Happy. Hug. Group hug. Group hug. Family hug. Family. Bring it in here. Okay. I'm oh, that's a, a thumbnail. Is that a thumbnail? <laughs> well, but what's another idea for here? Hit stop it real quick.